welcome back to the CSS Podcast. In today's episode, we catch you all up on the latest syntax offering from CSS Nesting. And we have had two previous episodes on nesting, which is episode 47. That was all about is, where, and nesting all rolled up in one. And episode 65, which was fully devoted to nesting and how it works. But that was in 2022. Ages ago. A really long time ago now, right? <laughs> um, and it was being really hotly contested then. This was even before it landed. So now that nesting is here and has evolved over time since it landed, there's so much more to talk about. Time flies, doesn't it? Is that a joke? Because you were just swatting a fly before this episode? <laughs> I failed at swatting a fly before this episode. <laughs> hey, good. You shouldn't kill animals. I wasn't trying to. I just wanted to get it out through the door and it wouldn't go to the door. You're like, please, I'm recording. Time flies. Don't troll me. Oh, that's funny. We'll see if you hear the background buzzing. <laughs> yeah, 2022. That's funny. I mean, yeah, we're going to be in 2025 by the time this episode lands. <laughs> Hopefully not. Psych. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. But yeah, back then, okay, yeah, we were talking about, I, I like the word relaxed that we would use back then, right? That's like the syntax continued to be relaxed and I could just see it on the beach, like chilling more and more as the CSS working group was working with nesting. But yeah, it, it, we would talk about this thing, like it didn't have the ability to look ahead. And so I do air quotes for like, look ahead. And so we thought it was relaxed in 2022, but 2024's version is even more chill and laid back, which also means it's much closer to SAS nesting syntax. Hooray. Yay. So on a quick note on browser support, the updates we'll be sharing are available in all major browsers. So Yuna, what's changed? Yes. And also these updates are available in all major browsers since December 2023. So while nesting landed a little bit before that, earlier in 2023, the updates landed in December across all browsers. So just keep that in mind if you are thinking about browser support when you can use these. So the first and major update that we want to share is that the syntax is now even more relaxed. It's just chilling on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> it's laid out. <laughs> Usage of the ampersand symbol for nesting is no longer required when you're nesting bare HTML elements. So for example, before this update, if you wanted to nest a list item inside of an unordered list, you would have required the ampersand symbol. You would have to do UL and then open parentheses and then inside of that ampersand space LI and then your styles due to how the browser parsed these selectors sort of going forward. And after the update, you don't have to do that anymore. Yay. So now you can directly nest the list item inside of the unordered list block to get access to styling the list item within the unordered list, the ULLI. And this is great because it's not only less to remember, but it's more ergonomic and works a little bit more like Adam mentioned how SAS nesting works. Yeah, this was a very welcome change because needing to remember special characters. Yeah, that was a bit tedious. And it's nice for it to not to be in our hair anymore. I think we even like talked about like it was like a Pac-Man where all it knew was the current dot it was eating. And so that's why there was no concept of look ahead. But they must have fixed that. Something changed. Ooh. Yeah. So this change doesn't mean that we no longer need to use the ampersand symbol in general. It's definitely still required if you want to nest something like a pseudo class, like hover or focus within, since you generally want to attach those directly to the element that they're being nested within and not the children of it. So you would do, you know, ampersand colon hover with no space in between. And this also aligns with the SAS nesting mental model because that's how it works. The ampersand sort of connects the two values. Yep. It's kind of like a semicolon in JavaScript. Sometimes you need it. Sometimes you don't. There's a few times where you're going to have to remember it, you know, but ultimately it's a lot easier than it was before. Yes. And Adam did also mention this look ahead problem. So Adam, if we can nest bare elements now, does that mean that they solved the look ahead problem because initially this was a limitation of the syntax due to how browser engines implemented nesting. It was sort of a roadblock to it. Yeah, as far as I know, they have not, but they did come up with a solution by, wait for it, restarting the parser. <laughs> so you mean they just turned it off and turned it back on again? <laughs> Yeah, that's like uh, when the parser is like tokenizing your CSS, like a little Pac-Man chomping through each one of your words that you're putting in there. It runs into a nesting syntax error when you did your ULLI example. You know, they're sitting there staring at it like, ah, oh, it's, cr it's crashing on this, on this parse. What do we do? And they were like, restart it right where it died. And that's all it took. And so it would wake back up and go, oh, look, an LI. And it would just Wait, <laughs> continue what? on. Yeah. That's how? Uh, 
that's how they did it. And so they uh, give it basically this one retry of parsing. And if it continues on, they can assume that it's nesting. And so it seems a bit silly, but you know, then again, we've all been there in coding and they did plenty of performance testing and found it completely acceptable and decided to ship it. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, I guess that my first question would be like, does that imp impact performance? But I guess I guess it's fine. <laughs> Apparently restarting it is no big deal. All right. <laughs> I put a show, uh, well, I put a link in the show notes. I put a show in the link notes uh, <laughs> <laughs> on web.dev where I kind of cover a little bit more of this in detail. So if you're, you know, slightly more interested in what's happening here or even just these updates to nesting, we do have a post on it. So you can go read about it if our mouth blogging uh, has been difficult to follow. Yes, the mouth blogging. Yes. So awesome. Thank you for the update. That's really all we have today on this handy little architectural change for CSS. Nesting is super convenient and it's pretty cool that we finally have nesting mm -hmm. in native CSS. Kind of wild to see how quickly we were able to actually land this. We figured out how to. And in a way that's pretty ergonomic. But one thing to note is though in this episode, we talked about some of the similarities of how nesting has become more like SAS. It's definitely not exactly like SAS nesting because where SAS is a preprocessor, nesting in SAS actually changes the CSS before the browser parses it. So you can do things like create new selectors via string concatenation, and you can't do that with CSS nesting. Uh, but you get other superpowers with CSS nesting, like nesting at rules, such as media queries and container queries that are kind of funny exceptions themselves and how they work because it sort of flips the nest and lets you nest the parent inside of the at rule, <laughs> which sounds complicated as I'm mouth blogging it, but it's actually super, super convenient. And you can also nest at rules like two at medias which you couldn't do with SAS. You'd have to do like a mix in to do that. And the browser handles the and logic for them. It just does it. It's pretty cool. It is cool. I have also shipped nesting on my my site, nerdy.dev. So if you go there and it doesn't render, it's probably because nesting's not in your browser. <laughs> <laughs> Although December 2023, you know, update your browser. <laughs> yep. Anyway, this has been a shorty but a goody. And if you have any CSS questions, we'd love to answer them on the show. Just tweet us with the hashtag CSS podcast. I'm at Yuna. That's at U-N-A. I'm at Argyle Inc. A-R-G-Y-L-E-I-N-K. Your question can help a lot of people. And if you like the show, please give us a review on whatever podcast app you're using. Or you can also share this podcast with a friend. Those reviews help other people discover our show and help us have more time to write stupid jokes and deliver better content for you. <laughs> yep. Keep calm and nest on, everybody. Looking forward <laughs> to your questions. We'll see you next time. Bye, y'all. Bye.